Hello, I'm your host, Effie Pilarino, and welcome to the new year, 2022. I'm very excited to have our first guest, a wonderful lady, Karen Venn, who wears so many hats, I don't even know where to start from, but um, uh, let, let me choose randomly. She is the editor of uh, Springer Nature, a series of books uh, dedicated to sustainable finance and SDG economics. And she is the founder of the Swiss FinTech Ladies Association. And, and as I said, very many other things that we will have the opportunity to talk about. She comes also from a traditional finance background, Deutsche Bank, Unicredit, and so on. Welcome, dear Karen, to uh, our video series. Thank you, Evie, for having me. That's, I'm really excited to talk to you. We, we used to meet very often at conferences, especially in Zouk, uh, uh, I remember characteristically, and, and of course at events that you organized with the Swiss FinTech ladies, but we haven't met in person in a while, and it is sad, but on the other hand, um, we are excited when we will meet, it will be like the first time. Yeah. So... I, I'm really especially excited to have you on the first uh, show this year because 2022 has this power of triple the power of number two, which is all Absolutely. about collaboration yeah. and partnerships. And, yes. and I know this must resonate with you as you devote a lot of your energy and focus on uh, sustainability. And um, I want to, to start with a bit of, of history of how you came about the Swiss FinTech Ladies Association. What is, what is the mission? Um, because it all ties into to your um, value system that is very much around sustainability. So, so tell us briefly about this association and its mission. Yeah, so uh, I was invited as a sustainability specialist, uh, as a speaker on various conferences in Zug and Zurich. And I realized having an investment banking background, which is a male dominated industry that uh, in FinTech, um, you really have a compound effect of finance and tech. And this means you have very, very little women. So, um, and uh, this, um, well, we thought, or I thought it's a good idea uh, if we can move the market to mixed teams because mixed teams is uh, what normally brings about also more sustainability. Women are more prone about uh, environmental and social issues. And um, yeah, we also know that mixed teams perform better, not only from science, but also from uh, research done by KPMG, uh, Ernst & Young, and so on. And uh, I thought, uh, well, what is the problem? Why do we have so little women in FinTech? And we saw, I not, and I, uh, well, discussed this with uh, some friends, uh, female friends, and uh, we said, okay, it's probably a combination of, well, do I have the skills? So this is why we have the Swiss FinTech Ladies Academy, um, where you can do a class uh, on blockchain for free, where you can do courses on uh, finance uh, in cooperation with Kaya. Uh, so how do I evaluate assets? Uh, well, how do I do financial number crunching and so on? And uh, we thought we also have to make females visible in the industry, so successful females visible in the industry. So this is why we have this uh, crypto talks. This is why we have the academy. And like everybody now in the last year, of course, we are reinventing ourselves and we are not doing just events, <clears throat> but we are working on products. Great. 
So it, it, I want to, to touch on a high level topic that um, I don't think we, we repeat enough, which is the distinction between uh, impact investing and ESG investing. I mean, we all yeah. know that ESG investing was a, a huge uh, trend last year in, in terms mm -hmm. of uh, assets and with all the challenges of greenwashing and so on. But what, how, how do you see this uh, distinction and how important mm -hmm. is it? Well, uh, let me maybe start with three observations. The first one is, uh, yes, there are a lot of meta studies um, that show that sustainability pays off, um, but it's all meta studies. And there's also a study uh, where we participated, uh, when you take the entire market, if you take a neutral sense, let's say the entire S uh, MSCI, and you apply, uh, you, you introduce a new variable um, for sustainability, use the Bloomberg database data on ESG and do the Lagrange optimization, then you find out it does not always pay off. So uh, you have to have a stance, you have to move away from passive uh, investments, so rebuilding the index, yeah, and throwing out some assets uh, because, uh, yeah, they are controversial. And you have to move to a more active approach. So thematic investment, um, for instance, and uh, yeah, integrated sustainability. And uh, this, uh, this means that uh, you only outperform the market if you uh, take an active investment approach and if you, and that means that you have to accept the tracking error. And the question is, how much do I get for my tracking error? Do I get a really better performance? And uh, when, you, and then we realized when we looked into the ESG ratings that there are big differences. So take a Tesla, take Tesla as an as an example. Yeah. So some rate some agencies rating agencies rate Tesla very high on ESG and others rate it very low. So there is no consistent model of, of rating companies. And uh, the ones who rate Tesla very high, they would argue it's changing the way uh, for mobility. So it's very uh, innovative and it uh, might have positive impacts. Whereas the ones who rate Tesla very low on um, ESG are the ones who say, well, they don't have a governance, they don't have a good governance model, they have a lot of scandals, uh, and so on. So, and this really shows that ESG and impact is not the same because um, Tesla has, I think we don't, no doubt, yeah, has an impact on how we define and, 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 and implement mobility. It's a new vision of mobility, but it is not an ESG approach because you look into the, the elements, E, is it really more sustainable if you do the entire yeah, value chain yeah, from digging out uh, the lithium uh, to, well, yeah, rec uh, recycling the batteries? Is it, does it have a good governance model? Probably not. So the question is, as long as we mix uh, ESG and impact, we will ne never get a consistent uh, approach to both of the concepts. And uh, regarding ESG, um, even now the EU and uh, the ESMA, so the European um, Security and Markets Association, they have stated that ESG is inconsistent and it needs to be reworked. And I think uh, this all um, confusion comes in because we do not distinguish. Impact investing is forward-looking. So how, what is my vision of mobility? What is my vision of finance? So how could the finance, financial market look in 10 years' times? How could mobility look in 10 years' times? But ESG is ex post. You look into uh, the balance sheets. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. 
And it has other elements and we have to distinguish the two. So impact is forward looking, yeah. Fantastic, and, and, and I love your, your example, which highlights uh, you know, this issue of uh, we, we don't have consensus, we don't have harmonization of metrics, yeah. and, and also your point of forward-looking and backward-looking, which brings us to, to the discussion about the SDGs, the, the 17 SDGs. Um, mm -hmm. While we were preparing for, for uh, this uh, recording, you, you mentioned about um, um, uh, the, the taxonomy that um, is, is being developed uh, in the EU uh, mm -hmm. a, around these uh, topics. So can you uh, elaborate on this and what is going on maybe globally? Yes, definitely. Thank you for that question, because this is a very, very interesting question. And uh, so let's go back to the roots. So what happened? So we had, um, yeah, the global compact, uh, we had the principles for responsible investment. So all initiatives uh, initially kicked off by the United Nations. And I think they came to the point where they saw that problem solving is not enough. We have to move from problem solving to solution creation. And that's a different animal, yeah? So um, of course you can say, well, this industry is controversial or these practices are controversial, controversial and filter out the assets, but you are still in your old way of thinking, you are not thinking out of the box, you're problem solving. And with the United Nations 17 uh, Sustainable Development Goals, they were really creating what impact investing is also about. They were creating a framework where they were moving from um, problem knowledge to target knowledge. Where do we want to go? Where do we want to go? Where, how should the industries look like? How, how should the world look like? in 20, 30, 40 years from now. And uh, of course, this target knowledge uh, where you define where you want to go needs different tools and you have to create the transformation knowledge because now you can't say, well, I will filter out some controversial assets out of my portfolio and that's it because that's problem solving. Uh, solution creation means that you say, well, I want green energy, I want uh, interconnected cities, uh, I want equality, I want uh, good education, and so on and so forth. I want clean water. And you have to concentrate on how you get there and which technologies will bring you there. So this all falls into the area of impact investing. And this is now exactly what the EU is doing as well. So they were defining uh, a green taxonomy. So which are the industries and which are the technologies that are in the view of the EU green? Become, because they want to uh, redirect capital from, well, the funds where, where it is now uh, and to get it invested into that green economy. And they defined uh, six, um, six areas like, yeah, uh, abating climate change, uh, dealing with climate adaptation, risk, biodiversity, circular economy, clean water, and so on. And now they are looking into what are the technologies uh, that uh, can fulfill this promise and what are, let's say, so transformation technologies where we don't have the final technology yet, but where we can, well, have at least uh, a transformation technology that can bring us to our goal. And so, so they were using, let's say, like the, the SDGs, a positive approach, a target knowledge approach, uh, and have defined uh, six industries where they want to look at and uh, which form now part of the green taxonomy. But what they said as well, and this is very important, they said, well, it's not okay <laughs> to um, yeah, and this uh, goes back to the Tesla by, uh, example. So it's not okay to have uh, green energy, 
or to work for green energy and at the same time harm one of the other goals. So if you create right. green energy, for instance, you cannot spoil water. So, so right. they do have, they do no significant harm provision. So first you look into the industries you want to go, target knowledge, then you say you, it, it has to be organized in a way where you don't hamper any of the other goals. And then they use the OECD uh, screening criteria for, uh, for ESG purposes, because they accept that if you're a Tesla, you still are not allowed to harm water and you should apply governance and um, yeah, uh, best practices on human rights and other issues. So uh, they created their own definition uh, starting with the target knowledge and no, do no significant harm provision. And then ESG as a third layer to really look uh, into the governance issues. Interesting. And yeah. So, so, so this is what the EU is, is doing. What about the rest of the world? Are you aware of, of how the rest of the world is thinking and approaching this? Are there any comparable sort of initiatives globally? So that's very interesting because uh, um, there are taxonomies arising all around the world. So we, Malaysia uh, has created a taxonomy, China, uh, South Africa, and many more. And it's interesting because the EU wants to create a platform for discussion uh, on uh, sustainable finance, and they are inviting all the other um, states like China, like Malaysia, like uh, South Africa, really to, to um, harmonize the approaches to get some conversion, yeah, in very, this regard. Very. And that's very interesting because this will trickle down into regulation of the Malaysian regulator, Chinese regulator, and it will also impact, of course, banking regulation in these countries, finance regulations in these countries. So this, uh, well, if you, you could maybe say, well, the United uh, Nations 17 development goals, they were top down. And now the, um, yeah, certain players are emerging and in a bottom up approach, they try to support that. What do you mean, uh, Karen, the, the bottom up approach? Where, where do we see this bottom up uh, movement? Uh, I see that bottom-up movement very much. So let's take the EU taxonomy as an example or the EU action plan for sustainable growth. What they did, uh, they created a, a multi-actors network because they were not deciding by themselves. So how should uh, the taxonomy look like? What they did, they brought together players from the financial industry, from the NGO community, uh, from um, uh, the big four, um, so audit industry, and they asked them how should uh, the market look like. And then the parliament, uh, the EU commission uh, was, uh, well, mainly, um, yeah, subscribing and endorsing what this multi-actors networks have developed and brought it in front of the parliament. And uh, yeah, and now we have, uh, well, uh, the new regulation, the green taxonomy and the criteria for the green taxonomy. This is all already existing. Um, the EU has created two benchmarks, a low uh, two low carbon benchmarks and many other things. And now they are looking into uh, a social taxonomy in the next step because one of the criticisms of course was it's only environmental, but you have to start somewhere. And uh, this shows that in a multi-actors yeah, network approach, uh, you can really create this consensus. Very interesting. It, Karen, while all this is happening, um, we, we, we live in a world where all the, um, future technologies, if you want, AI, blockchain, IoT, mm -hmm. and so on, are accelerating and, and are being deployed in different uh, use cases. And, and in several cases, we see uh, combinations of these being used 
So how does this reality of digitalization uh, at an mm -hmm. exponential rate that is happening, how does this um, sort of sit with what is happening at this value level? Because we are shifting our values essentially um, in, in the economy and in the society. And I mean, ideally we would want the digitalization that is happening to take this into account. So where are we? What do you see there um, as, as uh, the things that we need to pay attention or uh, the good things that you are seeing or the challenges? Pick whatever yeah. you like. I mean, it's a huge topic. But it's I'd a, like it's to really a huge topic. So, so the UN with the 17 development goals, uh, so it's organized according to the existing departments of the UN. So, um, uh, and the UN has their advisors on how to integrate blockchain and, um, yeah, digital currencies even, yeah in order to uh, become more sustainable. But there's not, and, and we know some of the advisors and some of them have also contributed to the last publication, Theories of Change. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think uh, many players are trying to integrate. So how can we integrate blockchain technology uh, for measuring, for instance, environmental effects because or impacts, because that's possible at the moment. We really have a certification system and you can, you know, people going there and <clears throat> or doing desk, desktop analysis. And we also have seen the fatal flaws that this can have, uh, like uh, the case of the Brazilian uh, hydro plant and hydro dam, which uh, broke down and the TÜV who was uh, the German TÜV, who was a certifier um, for that dam, uh, gave uh, out a certification uh, on environmental uh, yeah, cleanness, and uh, uh, it was not so. <clears throat> and, <clears throat> and when you have a blockchain technology behind it, so blockchain is um, immutable, so uh, you can't change what the blockchain, uh, well, what you have registered on the blockchain. So if you, if you use, uh, for instance, uh, drones, or if you use uh, even iPhones or phones, uh, you can uh, collect a lot of uh, information uh, on the environmental front. And the same is true for, for impact. So what I'm hearing from in institutional investors is, well, yeah, we don't have any measurement of impact. You could do it via blockchain. You could do it via um, digital equipment. And it would maybe be much more reliable than, than the certifi certifiers and, uh, and their reports and their certification programs. So um, I think that the UN really should consider to create an 18th department uh, for integrating blockchain technology into the other 17 goals. So one department which really looks at how can we integrate um, yeah, digitalization, how can we integrate the blockchain in all our other 17 goals? How can we measure um, impact? How can we measure also uh, innovation, how can we measure um, yeah, advancement in this regard? And um, yes, I think um, this is maybe the missing link because uh, sometimes it feels like we're on two different highways. We have the uh, United Nations Sustainability Goals and we have digital transformation where the algorithms are written right now. And these algorithms just don't contain sustainability issues very often. And so I think uh, um, an 18th department, so SDG 18, would help. It would have a signaling effect. It would be uh, cross-functional. It could, uh, well, 
um, cooperate with all the other 17 departments and it would ensure that we are not missing out on a huge opportunity to integrate sustainability now into the algorithms. Very interesting uh, uh, a concept and an insight, an 18th uh, SDG um, that uh, brings this all together in, in, in a way uh, yes. with the focus on, on technology as clearly we are reshaping uh, our society through technology. So um, I guess this wouldn't have been clear 10 or 20 years ago, but now it, right. is, it is clear that um, this is how um, we see the world. Um, we want to solve our problems with, with technology and we do have it. We are building it, as you said, right now as we speak, and um, uh, we, we, we need to uh, break this silo of, okay, here we are doing these things in technology that may have impact, financial inclusion, environment, whatever, mm -hmm. but it's, it's not really thought and built in from the beginning. Um, right. And, yeah. and um, uh, this, this, I think this leads very well to uh, the latest book uh, that you have um, uh, published, The Theories of Change, mm -hmm. in which I had the honor to, to contribute um, a chapter to. Um, and, and my chapter was focused on um, uh, cryptography and, and the societal impact of cryptography. But I'd like to hear from you, since you have the, the whole view uh, of the book, how important it is, and, and um, a mention of um, the need for theories of change uh, and, yeah. and the different views that you've brought together in mm -hmm. this wonderful book. Thank you, first of all, Evie, for uh, participating in, in the publication. That was also an honor for us. Uh, yeah, Springer and, uh, and uh, the Sustainable Finance team. Um, yeah, that's a very good question. Let me answer it like this. So how, why did we write this book? Why did we um, yeah, bring together the specialists for this book? We did both. Um, first of all, we saw that problem solving is not enough. ESG is not enough. Um, then uh, we saw that the UN is moving to a target knowledge from a problem solving perspective to a solution creation perspective, imagining the markets and the world as it should be in 10, 20 years. And what was missing was this transformation knowledge. So how do you go from the companies as they are now to uh, the world as you want to have it in 20, 30 years? You need a transformation process and um, we know that these processes do exist because the World Bank is working with it. Um, all the um, development banks are working with it. They have pro so-called program theories that help them to bring one country from, let's say, emerging to uh, G20 status. And, um, so you really have to stamp out the transformation paths that brings you through your program theory from uh, problem knowledge to target knowledge. And we wanted to show the examples uh, where there is already a program theory, so to speak, or at least a description of what is happening and what is missing in order to make it successful. Great. Great, thank you very much, uh, Karen. And uh, on, on this note, uh, I'd like to wrap up um, our interview and uh, please share with our audience where they can connect with you uh, and, and your initiatives. Um, mm -hmm. And I will of course uh, share that in, in the commentary too. Okay, so first of all, so what brings it all together at the moment is LinkedIn. So uh, just uh, Google Karen Bend on LinkedIn and you will find me. Um, you can also find Swiss FinTech ladies under www 
swissfintechladies.ch and uh, myself and the sustainable finance team uh, you if you when you google www.karen at sustainable minus finance dot io io stands for input output great thank you so much karen thank you.